Good afternoon, all. On behalf of IoT Academy, we welcome you all for the first session of National Level Faculty Development Program on Personality Development for Teachers in HEIs. Let me introduce the research person of today's session, Dr. Jyoti Tripathi. Dr. Jyoti Tripathi is currently working as an assistant professor, Government College, Rishabdev Udaipur, a PhD holder from Mohanlal Sukadia University and a gold medalist for her excellent contribution in cultural activities. She specializes in communication skills and committed to better facilitate student learning in the areas of language and literature. She has a vast academic experience of 12 years in teaching. She has published and presented numerous research papers in national and international journals and conferences, including IIT Partner. She has also attended numerous FTPs and seminars and has been associated with the Foundation for the Study of Literature and, and Environment India as an Executive Council member. We welcome you, ma'am. And with this, we hand over the session to Dr. Jyoti Tripathi. Ma'am, please. Thank you. Thank you so much for introducing so well to me. Am I audible, ma'am? Yes, ma'am. You are audible, ma'am. Okay. Is the screen visible, ma'am? Yes, screen is visible, ma'am. Okay. First of all, I would like to extend my thanks, my gratitude to IoT Academy for considering me as the resource person for today's session. And the topic is advanced leadership skills. The first, uh, ma'am, will you please change the slide? First of all, and yes, this is a warm greetings to all the participants who have joined the session. So I think that we will get so many things and our takeaways are going to really help us in future regarding leadership skills. Among the last slide, the previous one. Yes. So first, before beginning about advanced leadership skills, we need to understand what does it mean by a leader? What are the leadership skills, the basic leadership skills, and the advanced one? So a leader is the one, as we all know, that who is always ahead in the peck of the cards and guide the ways to all the beings. A leader is the one who identifies the path and then shows the same path to other people without hiding inch of it and then walks on the same. So simply and finally, we may say, we may understand that a leader is the one who knows the way, shows the way, and goes the way. But when we discuss about leadership skills, leadership, this whole idea remains incomplete without the complete involvement of the one who is leading the team. People have certain misconceptions about leadership that a leader is the one who creates, who develops followers. But it is not so. There are no more followers, but the leader is known for creating, developing, and building the other leaders. A leader and the leading ideas begin with the thought process, and then they are being executed in the ex external world. So the entire concept of leadership is from the mind itself. It begins from the mind and it ends then in the entire external world. For understanding leadership, we should understand what is the thought leadership, what does it mean by the situation leadership. So in the coming slides, we would discuss about these all. But before that, we may keep in mind the three I's about leadership. That is influence, impact, and then impression. So a leader is not the one who always leads the ship and the crew members, but he is the one who always influences people, who does something for persuading people and create the indelible impression or the impact in the mind of the audience, in the mind of the team members, in the mind of those who are connected and associated with him. And this impression, when it doesn't blur away for the longer period of time, it remains there forever and forever. That is the success of a leader. So with this, we begin our session here. And ma'am, will you please see, uh, change the slide? Now, all of you can, all the participants can, I think they are able to see the slides. 
and just drop me yes in the chat box if they are able to see the slides is the slide visible okay i'm getting some yes fine so let's do some you know one small activity here and through this activity we will try to understand different types of leaderships now all of you do one thing try to identify yourself with these animal creatures who are there on the screen so some may say that i am lion or i have the characteristics of lion the leadership you know which is there in lion otters some may have the ideas about beavers some may think that they are better golden retrievers so all of you please look at the screen think about yourself how do you identify yourself with these all creatures whose pictures are there on this slide and drop me a message in the chat box this is such a only a small activity to understand different types of characteristics of different leaderships we all know lion is a leader we all know otters are the leaders in their own field they are in the fables i'm not getting any message this is only for making the session interactive okay some say they are lions some say golden retrievers okay most of them are lion some are golden retrievers nobody is an otter nobody is a beaver just identify yourself yes i think we are there are 33 participants right now and i have got 10 messages others can you please identify do you good yes okay so what i what idea still you know i would request you all to please drop me a message in the chat box so that i can i can at least realize and come to know that you people are connected you are physically present here in the session because the session is no more successful because of a resource person the participants the audience they make a session successful and i really would like to extend my hand for your cooperation here yes very nice yes 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 doctor uh, heraz this is this is the chat box very nice so we have received almost you know 50% uh, this is fdp program so i can understand that you know there are some active participants or passive participants but no matter we have received a good number of responses thank you all some say and most of you say that we are lions and some of you say that we are golden retrievers and nobody uh, raised the hand for being otter and beavers ma'am please next slide now let's check some characteristics of these leaders you know they are leaders in the fables but through them we may understand that what different kinds of leaders are there with us in our surrounding so lions as we all know they are always leaders they are they are always bosses at the work they are more observers than watchers and listeners they believe in problem solving they are very very confident and self reliant most of the entrepreneurs are known as strong lions yes but there is one lacuna in this leadership also so all those who first of all who said that they are lion or they drop the message in the chat box that you know there is a good sign that you are a powerful leader you are very dynamic leader you have these leadership skills within you that is that is highly imbibed in you and now if we understand about one lacuna which is there in lion's leadership or lion like leadership we can we have to understand one thing that they are known for their aggressive aggression and if they do not have any control on their aggressiveness then they definitely reveal their 
strong feature which is of domination dominating other beings so they need to have good control over their aggression then and only they are going to be powerful dynamic and motivational leaders the second is for otters as you can see they are always cheerleaders there are some leaders in our surrounding at our workplaces we usually find them fun seeking very very excitable very you know they they are fun seeking people they always believe in enjoying life they always believe in cheer the life so it doesn't matter what position and what authority they get they are good networkers they are loving and very encouraging yes again there is one lacuna for them and that is that under pressure i mean such situations are not being handled very well by these such leaders and they lose their patience and they go for the verbal attack so otters or all those people who have the leadership skills leadership qualities like otters they need to keep in mind how to handle the pressure handling pressure requires a lot of efforts lot of practices i mean one has to be in the uh, the practices which we may say the energy handling practices some spiritual practices so it depends on the people what kind of the practices they are into but these may definitely help them to handle the pressure yes but this is for sure that otters these leaders are the life of any party ma'am please go for the next slide now the golden retrievers as you can easily see golden retrievers are very much loyal leaders they are loyal they are you know they always stick to their team they take care of their team the team is entire thing for them and they believe in them they are good listeners incredibly empathetic and warm encouragers and assertive in situations so they are i mean golden retrievers some people i think around 7 8 people raise their hand and they drop the message that they are golden retrievers so this is a good thing for them that they are loyal they are honest they are very good encouragers now the beavers the last they are very very unrealistic type of leader so please understand when we talk about these four types of leaders one is lion like that is very dynamic powerful motivational second is otters like who are cheerleaders and third is golden retrievers they are who have who are very loyal and honest in their field about their work in all aspects of the life and beavers who always stick to the rule they are rule abided they are regulation abided people they always seek perfection in everything and they are frustrated you know they are more of frustrated sort of leaders because the kind of efficiency which is there in these leaders this efficiency is also expected by them from the other people so this we need to keep in mind i i think you know this was just a small activity through which we could understand different types of characteristics of different leaders will we please go for the next slide now your all of us please understand about one thing the role leadership is more of a role so for understanding leadership we have to understand the role of people in society at the workplaces even in personal as well as professional life so in our personal life we are in the last slide the personal life we are family friends and we do everything for motivating and getting the desired results in the life and in the external life at our workplaces at the organizations maybe for the students the college life we are different beings there we are more responsible being we are professional beings and we have to set the benchmarks to be followed so now here comes the role of a leader so once we discuss about different roles of a person i'm sorry in the personal and the professional life in professional setup when we are required to set the benchmarks there comes the entire role of a leader and a leader is the one who guides the people who set the trends who create something new and ask others to follow the same so in the external world in the professional world the requirement of leader is more it is very much confined ma'am please the next slide now here you can see some pictures some people who have always been the great leaders for us now we have mr you know the picture of abraham lincoln 16th president of us and he did a lot of things for slavery abolition 
his proclamation emancipation proclamation paved the way for slavery abolition in the entire world not only in the us now mahatma gandhi the father of nation who does not know him he was a leader he was a great leader when we talk and when we say that leadership idea comes from within so he was the one who led the entire nation i mean he he his thought process at that time despite of all the atrocities of britishers despite of all the you know uh, different and the difficult and the adverse situations he and his nation had that time he had a vision he was a visionary and then he led many 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 you can say thousands and lakhs and lakhs people behind him and along with him i would say and on 15th august 1947 he got our independence dr apj abdul kalam our late president and he is not only known for his you know being a president of india he was a missile man he his entire journey from being such a poor boy to being a missile man is very very inspiring and motivational for us now steve jobs another picture we have here and steve jobs who does not know this name founder of apple company but it was it is not i mean we uh, get to know about these things in the newspaper through the social media platforms that steve jobs is known for apple company but do we know certain things about this man that he was suspended from his college when he was he had so many challenges he had so many different kinds of struggles in his life when he was in college he was suspended when he launched founded his own company apple he was fired from his own company can we imagine one who is fired from his own company and then he launched another company and then he was uh, invited and he was asked to join the company apple company again and apart from that the fonts the computer fonts which are there before me and you right now that was the creation that was the invention of steve jobs only his calligraphy skill led the way to computer fonts so see these are some pictures we have talked about these people why because they have inspired us throughout these centuries and now there are few names not few names there are globally there are n number of names with us mr ratan tata mr sundar pichai mr rishi sunak we are going to discuss him in this today session but yes we cannot include each and every name here so we picked some of them please go to the next slide ma'am so as till now we have understood that leadership is the idea it is the development so we we also need to understand what four different development levels not only of a leader but of every individual there are four different levels of the development now what are they if you see one is for low competence and high commitment other is the second level is for the low competence and low commitment third is for high competence and low commitment and the last level is high competence and low commitment high competence and high commitment now see for making you people understand about the four different development levels i need to take up one example and the example is of a bicycle rider the child a very young tiny child want to learn bicycle and for learning cycle riding what does he do i mean initially his competence level as we know is very very less but the commitment is high now why the commitment is high because of the temptation that i am going to if i learn bicycle riding then i would be able to go and hang around with my friends i may roam around the world i may have more fun and enjoyment in my life so because of this temptation his commitment is also high after some time his competency level remains the same but the but the commitment which was very high it also comes down with the competency level with the less self esteem with the less self confidence the commitment which we have initially in any kind of the task job or the project it also reduces it comes down after some time because of the you know the competency level increases the commitment remains still less and then finally comes the stage when the competence level goes very high and with that the commitment also goes high and the child achieves the goal of learning how to ride a bicycle 
So with this example, we may very well, very easily understand what happens to a person, to an individual in the organization and to a leader also. So usually the competency level is low, but the commitment is high. And in the final stage, both the competency and the commitment goes up. Ma'am, the next slide. Yes. This is about situational leadership approach. Now, this situational leadership approach, if you see there are S1, S2, S3, S4. I'll just take a pause, a few seconds pause, so that you can at least read the slide, understand the slide, self-understanding, self-interpretation about the slide. Yes, I think you have gone through the slide, everyone, all the participants here. Now you can easily see the slide, this, uh, you know, S1 stands for high directive and low supportive behavior, which is very much directing. The second is the case, second situation is for coaching, that is high directive and high supportive behavior. Third is for the low directive and high supportive, that is for supporting. And last is for delegating, that is low directive and low supportive behavior. Now we need to understand one thing when we talk about advanced leadership skills in you know some somewhere in the after 10 slides i have written something i have prepared something for the advanced leadership skills and there i have mentioned one more word and that is delegation so a leader has to know how to delegate whom to delegate when to delegate and why to delegate but then in this slide you may very well very easily understand that delegation comes at the end if a leader, if any authority, any employer in the organization starts delegating the work from the very first point, what will happen? It is not going to groom the employee. It is not going to give any productivity to the organization. And at the same time, it will not be any point of any benefit to the employer. So what we need to understand here that the first, the initial situation is of directing. When someone joins the organization, in the organizational context, I'm uh, speaking on this slide, that when someone joins the organization, the approach of a leader with the authority needs to be directing. That, you know, uh, can we go to the next slide? So this is this directing approach, S1. This is the style descriptor, which, can, uh, which is self-explanatory. But yes, we need to discuss. So in the directing mode, in the directing situation, the first situation, the authority or the leader does nothing but define, plan out, orient, uh, go for the induction program of the employee, teach him, okay, show him, tell him certain things, check and monitor, and then give feedback. And the second, second is the situation of coaching. Give proper coaching to the employee or the subordinate, which is for high directing and low supporting. Now, what happens here? Here, the leader has to explore, ask questions, tell him something uh, about you know how to perform the task, explain, clarify, redirecting. Yes, sharing feedback also comes in this. Encourage and praise. So these all come under the second situation, which is of coaching. Now, please go to the next slide. Now, the third situation. Third situation is very important because a lot of narratives have to be set up here. This is the situation when we have low directive and high supportive. The, this, is, this, this particular situation is known for supporting the subordinate or the employee. Now the leader, the authority, has to be very clear that this time only directions, only supporting will not work. I have to set certain narratives. I have to reassure. I have to better facilitate my subordinate for coming up and being a leader in future and lead my the other team members or the other employees of my company. So here he asks, he listens, he pays attention, he reassures, facilitate, and you know, try to make the other being the self-reliant, try to solve the problem, ask him to solve the problems, collaborate with him, appreciate and encourage the feedback. So this is the stage, this is the situation where a leader, I mean, where a simple employee, ordinary employee, starts converting into a leader. 
So this particular situation remains very, very important in the organizational context. And the last is of low directing and low supporting. Why? Because by this time, the employee already, I mean, the subordinate who is being led, who is being mentored, who is being uh, facilitated by the leader, the authority is already a ready product. He is the ready product for the coming future. And by now, this person is able to lead others. So here, what happens? He is empowered one. He is being empowered by the authority. He is being affirmed. He is given, you know, uh, permission. He is being trusted by the leader, given more challenges, more challenging aspects, tasks. And yes, whenever he does something good, he is being acknowledged and given proper credit for his work. So I think we have understood out of these four situations that how directing, coaching, supporting, and delegation works. So again, I repeat that the delegation comes at the end. And before that, there is the entire process which is required to taken up for converting one simple ordinary employee or the team member into a leader. As I said initially, that a leader's task, a leader's responsibility is not to make the followers, but to develop the other leaders. Please go for the next slide. Yes, absolutely. We have come to know about this, that we are not leaders. One who is a leader is an influencer. He has to, he or she has to persuade others for coming up in front and leading others. Please go for the next. Now we have already discussed about this man. Please, please go for the next, the poem of Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam. This is very close to my heart. I wanted to take it up for teaching leadership skills, for speaking on this whole idea that Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam, he was not only an author, a philosopher, a scientist, a leader. He was a man in himself. He was a great institution in himself. Throughout his life, through his writings, through his deeds, all the actions, he has always been motivated, led, facilitated and mentored us and this poem is one of them so i would just recite this for you all i climbed and climbed where is the peak my lord i flow and flow where is the knowledge treasure my lord i sailed and sailed where is the island of peace my lord almighty bless my nation with vision and sweat resulting into happiness so this is a vision which was there in the mind of Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam. And because of that only, he persuaded people, he followed his vision, and he took a lot of people along with him in his entire idea of changing the nation. So he was a visionary. He was a, he was a very poor man. But still, from being a poor man, he, uh, he, he completed, he finished his journey of being a scientist, and then becoming president of India, it is again very, very inspiring. But see, do we know about certain methods which were used by him for, uh, for uh, you could say, appealing, for persuading the people in his life? Yes. I remember one story, one narrative about him. Once uh, the employee, one of his employees, gave uh, an idea, or it, no, he did not give, but he asked something to Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam that please grant me leave. Today is my son's birthday. And being a very strict leader, being a very strict boss, he never allowed people to go for holidays because work, is, work used to be worship for him. And then he said, no, you are not allowed. You have to work. But so this was something very strict action uh, took by him. This was a highly disciplined action uh, of Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam. But at the very next point, I mean, by the evening, he went to the house of this man and celebrated the birthday of his son. So what we understand out of this narrative that there are several methods of, you know, being a good leader. So leadership doesn't say that every time we need to be highly lenient, highly liberal towards our uh, organization or the people of the organization, but no. If we are not very liberal, then at the same time, we are not supposed to be highly disciplined. And if we are highly disciplined, 
then what next we may do what other options we may opt for pampering or for giving some kind of uh, uh, some kind of relaxation to the employees of our organization please go to the next slide now these are the traits next slide ma'am now some traits of leadership through dr apj abdul kalam we try to understand uh, understand uh, several traits like he was a visionary he was an author he was a scientist he was in the field of politics he was a social reformist also but here we have certain pointers with us through which we can understand what is a leader and what is going to be the traits for advanced leadership a leader has to be or needs to be honest and sincere yes honesty is very important thing ethicality and tata group we may take one example mr ratan tata who is known for his ethical approaches in life still there are uh, in the market we have n number of companies i mean there are monopolies of uh, big uh, market big big companies uh, mncs multinational companies but still we still remember the ethical approach in the practices of tata group so leader has to be honest and sincere in his approach he needs to be caring for others his logical reasoning should be good enough he should take the oppor uh, opportunity at the same time ownership that is being very much responsible responsible for himself responsible for the task taken up and responsible for the team members mental and physical health i give it a uh, more emphasis because post covid 19 we have seen the crisis so far as concerned the mindfulness of people so mental and physical health physical fitness mental fitness is much required and what is much why is it much required because emotion mental health is required good mental health is required because the emotions are very much contagious so once we just uh, have the bug and it spreads very fast so the mental health of people the mindfulness well being is very much required why because this is the one thing which is going to decide success of a leader the team the project and the entire organization then society and the nation yes i would like to quote here sadguru for speaking so good on well being that every time from civilizations to civilizations we have been in the pursuit of well being no matter what mechanism we have used so throughout the civilizations we have used different mechanisms different practices but ultimately we are working for the well being if today we are sitting and discussing something that is for well being if an organization is working if the school and colleges are working and in the society or politicians everybody is working for the well being so it is very much required for being a good leader now empathy yes very important one has to empathize with others if a leader doesn't have any kind of empathy in himself or herself he will not be able to understand his team members and without understanding understanding is such a small word but then it plays uh, it plays and it works miracles in the life personal lives as well as the professional lives of people so he needs to empathize with his team members his self confidence self esteem needs to be very high and objectivity yes no subjective approach i mean how do i look professionally how i'm taken professionally what kind of the narratives are set about me how people talk about me okay so these all things are going to be you know these all are narrow minded thinking i would say these all are self centered approach only and a leader has to reach above these all so if we discuss about again the idea of leadership a leader is the one who has different sense of life beyond himself so someone who thinks about society who thinks about the well being of the team members then the organization then society and then the no, no, nation then he may say the leader is above than the subjective idea and he thinks he takes up he looks at the big picture he thinks about the objective frame and then and only he or she may reach to the higher goals attain the higher goals communication very important because the communication is the key of success these days every time the gaps the breakdowns the problems they all occur because of the communication barriers 
So yes, a leader has to make sure that no communication barrier must arise because of me. Maybe it's speaking, it's uh, not listening, not paying attention, not understanding. So not understanding begins, uh, begins with the communication problems only. If there are open communications, if there are transparencies, if there are open door policies, if the leader is approachable, if he pays attention to the needs of his team members, then definitely he is going to lead them well and they would be achieving the desired results. Now, assertiveness, yes, very important, and then technical competency. These all are the traits of being a leader. But an advanced leader, do we ever think that, you know, what is the basic dis difference? When I was preparing this presentation, working on it, I found, you know, this is uh, out of my research, that I found it one very thin line between a leader and an advanced leader. That a leader has all the qualities of leadership, but an advanced leader is more polished. An advanced leader begins from, uh, begins from his own mind. An advanced leader is the situational leader, an advanced leader is the thought leader, an advanced leader is unique, is original, is trendsetter, innovator, and creator. He is visionary. So we have discussed about this. An advanced leader is the one who travels the unexplored path. He has the risk-taking abilities. He knows how to travel, how to take up a path which is not uh, seen and not explored by other beings. Again, I would like to quote Sadhguru who says that a leader is no one, but the one who sits on the perch and can see what is not seen by the others. So if what is seen by ordinary people, all the team members, if it is seen by the leader, is no more a leader. Leader is the one who can see which is not seen by the other beings. So yes, and at the same time, we may uh, we may understand by saying that if you think, if one thinks only about oneself, means he is self-centered. If one thinks only about the family or the group of, group of people who are known as the personal relatives, then the person is going to be dhritarashtra of today's time. And if the one thinks about all these things, about the society, nation, societal gains, through the organization and the project and task taken up by the team, then we may say he or she is the advanced leader. So here it is. Now managing failure, success can be managed by all of us, but if failure is one which is not manageable easily because that is uh, full of pressure. And when we are under pressure, no one is able to play the task, do the task very well. So advanced leader is the one who knows how to manage the failures. He is very courageous in decision making. He is able to take the risk. All these things we have already discussed. An advanced leader is very, very noble in his approach, in his management. He always means his team. He is approachable. He is creative, as I said, and strong in process and forgiving. Now, here I would like to discuss a few points, strong in process and forgiving. Now, how one can be strong in process? A leader has to set certain objectives, and these objectives need to be measurable. When someone decides the objectives for the task, for any project, these objectives need to be measurable. Second, a leader has to take care of the well-being of his team members. And third, when we talk about developing the team members, how they can be developed, how the entire process how the entire, I mean, all these uh, assigning tasks to the team members is going to help the organization and the team members. And when we say learning, learning is also a never ending process. So when you do one task, you learn, you get the learning opportunities and these learning opportunities, how they are going to be the milestones, not only in the pathway of the organization or the team members, but individually, how they are going to go, grow professionally. So strong in process is only one thing that, you know, uh, how leader can decide the entire process and how this process is going to help the organization and the individual team members. Forgiving, very important. Now, for understanding forgiving this particular term, we need to understand about several other negative ideas of leadership, that what a leader should not do. A leader, leader should not 
blame others our leader should not you know getting stressed a leader should not be the one who lose the temperament very easily and a leader should not be disorganized in his approach so when all these things come the first idea is of not blaming others and when we do not blame others the team members like you know certain team members they were the part of some task and they 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 just performed something and the huge you know you can say the huge blunder took place and the next time when the task distribution was there when leader wanted the boss wanted to delegate some work to these team members he would he was prejudiced he was preoccupied with his notions and that time he decided not to give the same task or the similar sort of task to the same person the individual now this is what this is like stucking oneself in the in one particular energy situational energy so leadership is the one when a leader or the one who can decide that oh, now i am disconnected the the previous task was the previous task the futuristic task will be the futuristic one and when i disconnect myself from the previous one i will not have any prejudice because even the hr resource management all these things they also talk about one thing that is perception molding so leader should also have this idea of perception molding changing his perceptions about the same employees or the subordinates and then distributing them the task so this is the whole idea of forgiving please ma'am go ahead now some advanced leadership skills we may see here time management very important a leader has to know how to manage the time manage the time of himself his team members and the entire organization delegation we have discussed much about delegation and in the previous slide only we discussed how to manage the conflict this is the bigger area because relationship problems are very important things and uh, synchronization how to coordinate among the team members so conflicts arising of these conflicts in the organization is not new since long time there have been conflict i mean if there are two team members conflicts would be there if there are five and more than five and then you know number of team members conflicts would be there so a leader who knows how to remove these conflicts how to have uh, just the idea and the whole process without any stress because stress emotions they are very contagious i repeat here and once uh, there is stress in the mind of the leader or the team members it is going to travel very soon to the minds of other people and to the whole organization and definitely it will harm the productivity of the organization now persuasiveness very important leader has to persuade what people are doing how i mean how he is carrying himself how he organizes himself what is his uh, speech level how eloquent speaker he is how what kind of the self esteem and the self concept he has about himself so these all things are going to help the leader to persuade other beings negotiation very important it's not only during interviews when people negotiate negotiation takes place every moment in the organization like uh, for delegation of the work distribution of the task giving feedback talking about the appraisals of the team members then giving them some perks talking about their well being every time negotiation is there so negotiation skills are also very important for the advanced leadership now give autonomy and authorship very 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 important i would say now if the team members are given autonomy authorship then i mean their name is attached to some project and the task they get directly or indirectly the license of creativity and this kind of thing this kind of work creates a shift which is the cognitive shift and that does miracles in the uh, in increasing the productivity of the organization so these team members must be given autonomy authorship and individual approaches by the leader show their passion yes a leader has to be or needs to be very much passionate now passion and enthusiasm they also spread very fast as i said stress and the problems the tension the panic situation that spreads very fast in the same way enthusiasm that that is just opposite family that is opposite family of the stress doubt and fear and if somebody is really or somebody is enthusiastic then and passionate that spreads and that reaches to the minds of team members and they also grow according along with the 
detail. Explain the why, very important. If all the team members know why they are doing something, why they are part of this particular thing, and what would be the end result, then definitely they are going to be more driven. They are going to be more passionate, and they would like to complete the task in the given deadline and would be going for more productivity. Help them develop, yes. Leaders are meant for developing others, and this we will understand in the next slide. This is some. This is nothing but how uh, you know that there are certain factors that impact the team performance. So, what factors impact the team performance? If you see, learn to trust the intellectual ability of the team members. If someone understands the ability of team members, practice information sharing, which is open door policy, talking, sharing, having transparency in communicating and sharing the knowledge, information, and monitoring time to time their performance. So, all these areas are areas and the factors which definitely impact the performance of the team members and improve and increase the productivity go for the next slide please now this is five levels of leadership now i said help developing i mean a leader is responsible for developing team members and how it is possible we we are going to see through this slide basically these are the five levels of great leadership now, how what different kinds of leaderships are possible when we talk about the advanced leadership? So the first three levels are of the basic leadership, and the last two levels, four and five levels, they are of the advanced leadership. Now, first you can see people. I mean, if you hold, I mean, if you join some organization, hold certain position, you are director, executive director, people would be following you, people would be respecting you because they have to. You are holding a position, you are on the chair, and this is their responsibility to share, salute the chair. Second is, it's not about, I mean, this kind of level or this kind of leadership is not only because of the authority and the power and holding the position, but just people want to follow you. They, you know, somewhat like you or the way you work, and then they take permission and they follow you and they become your followers and they come along with you. So this is second. Now, the third level of leadership, if you see, this is production level. Now, what is production level? When people follow you because you have done so much for the organization. You have been very productive for the entire organization. And people also want to be productive for getting more incentives, getting good appraisals, and then uh, being renewed or going to the higher position in the organization. So they just salute you and respect you for this reason. Now, the fourth level, that is the people development level. And this level says this level is more respectful so far as concerned the leadership. Why is it so respectful? Because you people follow here, not because of your position, not because of your permission and the production, but they follow you because you have done something for people. You have developed, you have mentored people. Now, personhood, that is the last level. When you have just gone beyond all these levels, I initially spoke one definition of leadership that a leader is the one who has a very different sense of life beyond himself. So when you think beyond yourself, beyond your personal interests, beyond your relations, personal and professional, then you come and reach to this level. You are a consistent performer. You have consistently been developing, mentoring people. Then people definitely love to listen to you, love to follow you. And this level is known as the level of personhood. Now, please go to the next slide. Now, here are the future leadership capabilities. So what way we have forward we need to see now what capabilities are required for being the advanced, the power pack. You know, the words are words are words only. Playing with the, it's it's only playing, you know, playing with the language. So advanced leadership, power pack leadership, dynamic leadership, if you can use any word. So what is lying for the future leaders? Thinking global, very important. Now the entire globe is there in our fist, on our fingertips, right? And we have to check, you know, how fast we can grow and how we can assure our position in the global market, in the global requirement. Because in many of these companies, the global companies, Indians are rocking. They are doing very well. I would again name out Mr. Sundar Pichai. And there are so many others. So we have to think global and accordingly, uh, act accordingly. 
Now, cross cultural diversity, we need to understand what different cultures are lying around us. Now, we are, I said, we are the part of globalization, we are in the globalized world in the 21st century. So, this cross cultural approach, communication, diversity has to be understood and paid attention by us. We should be technological savvy because technology has got previously in our Hindu mythologies. We, we knew about Naraji talking to different gods, deities. We also, these days we have, I mean, I mean, our data is going to cloud. Now, cloud is the place for all the gods, goddesses, deities. So this is, I call it, I mean, in the mythological way, I call it that technology is God and we have to accept it as it is. We should be very much, uh, be very much prompt by using technology. Now, building alliances and partnerships, sharing leaderships, very important. Networking is worth working. That we always need to keep in mind and work upon this area. Learning agility, very, very important. One has to be very much agile because learning is never ending process. This time, you are not only learning, I'm also learning along with you. So when we are part of this endless learning process, we really be more productive. We do good in our life. I would again take one example here of COVID-19 period. Long back when polio was there, okay? Uh, yes, the vaccination, polio vaccination, as we all know, it took, you know, the time period of 10 years. But how much time was consumed in preparing the vaccination for COVID-19? It was, it was six months time period for Indians. So imagine how we, how much we have learned and how far we have come along the way. So all these are the points we need to keep in mind for thinking about leadership in the futuristic approach. Please go to the next slide. Now here, here's the man, okay? The sensation of this year, sensation of the century, I must say, Mr. Rishi Sunar. So here we are going to discuss something about him to have the current, the latest idea of leadership, What winning lessons of leadership are possible. So Mr. Vishy Sunaki doesn't require any kind of introduction. He is a, a millionaire politician, uh, recently uh, you know, elected for prime minister of Britain, which is, I mean, non-white prime minister from Indian origin. So this introduction is like the, the great introduction for this man and for we all need to take pr uh, proud in this moment. Now, Rishi Sunak, when we talk about him as a leader, he grew much. Now, will you please go to the next slide? Next. Next. Yes. So when we say dream, taking risk to make your dream a reality, he was a dreamer. Now, who made him dreamer? First of all, let's just understand something about this man. We know he is, uh, presently, he is Prime Minister of Britain. Uh, he is from Indian origin, that these things are known to us. But along with that, we should also know something about this man, about his past. That is, grandparents and parents, they shifted to uh, UK in 1960 from uh, South Africa, from, from North Africa, I'm sorry, from North Africa. And there they moved long ago from India. Now, this man uh, was born in 1980 in Southampton. And then he joined, he attended the school Winchester. He studied in Oxford University also. His mother was running a pharmacy there. His father was a doctor at that time. And he, he did a lot of things. He did a lot of hard work to reach to this level. But actually, this was his family who dreamt of big about Rishi Sunak, who gave, who allowed this, uh, who gave this opportunity and allowed this man to dream big for him for his nation and for all the beings in his surrounding. And when we see, when we talk more about his challenges, life challenges, life spirit, ma'am, please go to the next slide. Yes, next. Yes, share your goal with the people. He believes in sharing his goal with the people. He believes in himself. And all these are the traits, the characteristics of a good leader, advanced leader, I would say. Next slide, ma'am. Now, he is always, he has remained with his team, empowered them. Yes. Yes. He is known for making powerful and hard moving, hard winning speeches. Now, when it comes to the, when, when we 
talk about speeches i may not forget taking the name of i have a dream by martin luther i will also not forget the great speech which was delivered by the great character shakespearean character antonio and he said friends romans and countrymen lend me your ears so one has to be a leader has to be the eloquent speaker he should know what is the communication how to communicate when to take pauses and how to maintain the pace the speed while communicating and while delivering the speeches whether they are impromptu or the prepared ones and rishi sunak is one of them it is the picture of uh, the time when he delivered his first speech after being after you know becoming the prime minister of uk next slide ma'am now be a good listener you have to pay attention to others you have to be open creative in your approach so we have already discussed these characteristics he is one of them now collaborate and win the competitors now the lady who is here in this picture is listrus now i think uh, we all read newspapers and we all know about them listrus also so there was a competition between these two for the post of prime minister and there was a tom and jerry race between these two every day every now and then i mean we used to hear that now listrus you know got this much votes now mr rishi sunak is ahead of listrus so despite of a race a competition like tom and jerry he always respected this lady and he collaborated and then he it is also required to the, to win the hearts of your enemies and i would not i should not use the term enemy when we talk about healthy leadership skills that one who is your competitor one who is in the opposite party so this big heart is required to be opted to be hold by the leaders and this is there in this man rishi sunak next ma'am be youthful fit and healthy so someone who is a leader it doesn't mean the one is you know one has mortgaged his life to the organization and to the people around uh, you know in the organization no one has to be youthful fit and healthy one has to handle the energy one, then and only one can handle pressure stress and the panic situations he is very youthful he became uh, the english cricket loyalist he is also fond of football movies exercising and this is visible very much visible through this picture next ma'am yes be proactive don't react under pressure what matters is what is inside you very important so this is the man whose resignation if you remember kick started the process of resignation of british pm mr boris johnson so this was a great sensational news that time he is very popular over there and but he never came in front and he never spoke uh, which was not meant for him to speak so this is something i mean there are so many thoughts 80000 thoughts go on in our mind in the time period of 24 by 7 i mean in one day time period so it is not necessary for us to give emphasis and stress to all these thoughts the thoughts which are required for us to be uh, just nourished to be watered we must nourish them only go for the next one yeah never neglect forget your family very important for rishi sunak his family is everything uh two families one is his father mother his uh, two siblings and because they did a lot of uh, hard work for him they struggled so much they uh, and they struggled for paying his school and college fee and this uh, this became very important for rishi sunak and for him he he says that my family means everything to me then this lady along with him in the picture is akshita murthy if you know uh, she is the daughter of uh, mr narayan murthy and sudha murthy founder of infosys in india the richest men and uh, they met at stanford university when rishi sunak was pursuing his mba there and at the age of 29 he got married please next ma'am yeah so here we we just uh, conclude the entire presentation on rishi sunak and the leadership and i would like to say that this man faced a lot of challenges in his life i mean he was he wasn't a millionaire never belonged to a millionaire family then uh, he he was a uh, very much uh, uh, he he dreamt a lot for himself for his country but then there were so many different kinds of the hurdles and just in the process he worked and he served as a waiter in his uh, family i mean some relative restaurant 
and later on when he was in the race of prime minister with Liz Truss, there were problems and different hurdles and the hurdles like the party gate scandal uh, because he joined the party which was thrown by Mr. Boris Johnson during uh, the COVID-19 period. And the second problem, second hurdle was the non-domicile status of his wife, Akshita Murthy. And these problems, they, they just cropped, but they were the minor and the very, very minute problems for this big, for this great man, this great leader. And he overcame them and became the prime minister of the nation which ruled India, the country, for years and years. Please go to the next slide. So it is knowing is knowing, doing is doing, and knowing and doing two different things. We know about that. So if we can match, we can have some repo, we can have some, you know, we can match the wavelength between two, that is knowing and doing, then it may actually do the miracles and we wait for that. We all have the capacities to be good leaders and I wish you all the best, very best for your future. I hope I could enlighten you all on this idea of leadership, advanced leadership. And I tried my level best. I think if you have learned something, you may tell me in the chat box also. Over to you, ma'am. Thank you. The session is open for discussion now. We can unmute and interact with the resource person or you can post your questions in the chat box. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you all. Any questions, please? Yes, I think somebody has raised their hand. Sunidhi, ma'am, please go ahead. Sunidhi, ma'am, do you have any query, ma'am? You can write it in chat box also, ma'am. I'll read it to ma'am. Yes, Sunidhi, ma'am, do you have any question? You have raised your hand. See, this is such a big topic and just covering the entire thing in one hour is not possible, but we did our level best. So if you have some ideas, some suggestions, some questions, any feedback, please come up, drop your message in the chat box, your question in the chat box. I think they can unmute and speak also, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. They can unmute yes. and speak. So it's not only for the question. If you have no question, then you may share your feedback. You may share uh, what you know about leadership. Please go ahead. Gurpreet ma'am, uh, Vasundra ma'am, would you like to speak something? Would you like to share something, any question or just anything on leadership? Thank you for your messages. Thank you so much. Thanks for uh, being so patient listeners because we also attend uh, many development programs, professional development programs, and we know how much patience is required. So in our fraternity, in our field, good listeners are equally important as are the resource persons. Yes. Everybody is messaging. Thank you for your feedback. Nice, excellent presentation. Thank you, everyone. But if you want to share, you can come up and share. Or otherwise, over to you, ma'am. Participants, any queries? Uh, 
something there are no more queries from their side ma'am so shall we wind up ma'am yes why not please thank you on behalf of iot academy we thank dr jyoti tripathi ma'am for the informative enlightening enriching and wonderful session we thank you once again for the amazing and excellent presentation ma'am we thank you for enhancing our knowledge with your commendable presentation it was an amazing it was an amazing presentation ma'am we thank you very much for your efforts thank you ma'am thank you all of you thank you i thank all the participants for joining the session today kindly submit the feedback form using the link that has been posted in the chat box thank you all ppt will be sharing the recorded sessions in the groups